All right, we are going to move on to question six now on this. Now keep in mind also that for you guys, you have the answer key available to this too. All right, so this is just, this is more for the explanations of how to do these. So if you look at the answer key and you're able to you know, piece it together, if you're not exactly sure, then that's probably good enough. But this is for those of you who are like looking at it and for whatever reason, it's not making any sense. All right, so number six, let's do this one. So we're finding slope, right? Find the slope of the line. So we are gonna use our slope formula. And if you remember that, it's y2 minus y1. So it's your change in y over your x2 minus x1. All right, so it um, doesn't matter which, which one we call y2 or y1, so as long as we, we stay consistent with it. So um, I'm going to start with, uh, with the first one. So I'm going to use the y from there. I'm going to go 1 minus, and then I'm going to use the y from here, which is 1. And then I'm going to start with my x, which is 4 minus, and you have negative 4, minus negative 4, and I'll put that in parentheses. All right, so when you have that, okay, look what happens on top. You go 1 minus 1 and you get 0. So it really doesn't matter what you get on the bottom. I mean, we, we get 4 plus 4 and it equals 8, right? So you get 0 over 8. But if you're dividing 0 by anything, you always just get 0. All right, and so the answer is your slope, which is m, equals 0. Now, a lot of people will see a 0 on the top and they'll, they'll kind of panic and they'll say, oh, it's undefined, but it's not undefined because you can take zero and divide by any other number. When it's undefined is if you were to take this whole thing and say you have eight over zero. Now, if you have that, that is undefined, okay? Because you can't, you can't divide by zero. Um, and it's a, it's a weird concept to try and wrap your head around, and I'm not going to go into it here, but we, we just say in the math world that that's undefined because we don't know how to explain what the answer would be for that. All right, so at least not in a short way we don't know how to explain. We, there are explanations of it, but they're, they're involved. All right, number seven, same thing. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to start with my y from that, so I'm going to go seven minus, and then take my next y, which is negative 2. And then, because I started with 7, I got to start with my negative 6 there. So negative 6 minus, and we have negative 6. All right, so 7 minus negative 2 or is 7 plus 2. All right, and then negative 6 minus a minus is negative 6 plus 6. Well, 7 plus 2 is 9. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0, and we have a case of what we were just talking about. So in this case, we would say it's undefined, all right? Can't divide by 0. Just can't do it. It's a no-no. All right, number 8. Write a linear equation, a slope-intercept form to model the situation. An internet company charges $4.95 per month plus $2.50 for each hour of use. So whenever you do these types of problems, these real world problems, your m, which is your slope, is always going to be your rate. And it's your rate that changes throughout the term. All right? And they're, they're asking you to model the situation just for, you know, for one month. Right? So your rate, in this case, is going to be this 250 for each hour of use. And so if you were going to figure out your, your overall cost, right, and you would use slope-intercept form, so that's y equals mx plus b. So you, you would get y equals, well, your m is going to be your rate, which is 250, so we'll say 2.5x. And then your y-intercept is always going to be kind of like your initial cost or your starting fee, and that's that 495. So for one month, you start out, even if you don't use any hours of usage, right? You start out paying $4.95, and then for every hour, you, uh, you pay $2.50. And I'm glad this is old and doesn't exist anymore because you would be bankrupt. <laughs> well, at least we would in my house because we probably used hours and hours every day 
and would rack that up uh, within a week, it would cost more than what I normally pay for a month, which I think is too much. All right, number nine. In 1995, 57.5% of students at Gardner University graduated in four or fewer years of study. In 2009, that number had fallen to 52.8. Okay, what was the rate of change for percent of students graduating within four years from 95 to 2009? All right, so the big thing in this is this is a slope problem, all right? Rate of change is slope, all right? Rate of change, whenever you see that, just think slope. And it's always your y divided by your x. Sorry, I really don't like it when it does this. It's y over x. And because it's y over x, we have to figure out what's y and what's x in this. Well, y is always your dependent variable, and it's the thing that changes based upon what the independent's doing. And usually in these problems, when you have an independent variable, it's something that just kind of changes on its own without being affected by anything. And usually if you have something with time, that's going to be your independent variable. And that's, that's what the case is here, is 95 to 2009. So we're going to call that our x, okay? So let's figure out what our change in x is. So remember, you have your change in y over your change in x. So your change in x, it goes from, it goes from 95 to 2009. So we'll reverse that. And we'll go 2009 minus 1995 to figure out what that bottom number is going to be. And that's going to be, uh, let's see, 9 to 9. So it's going to be 14, right? And then this top number, OK, it's you have to match up your values. So in 2009, your rate was 52.8. And then in 1995, it was 57.5. All right? And so if I, if I uh, subtract those, I get a negative number. I get negative 4.7, I believe. Negative 4.7. And then so all, all you would do to finish this problem up is you would take a calculator, which I'm grabbing right now, okay? And you would, uh, give me just a second here, you would take your calculator and you put in your numbers. It's, I know it's a negative divided by a positive, so it's going to give me a negative answer. 4.7 divided by 14 is 0 0.33, so it would be negative 0 0.33. 3, 3, and 5, so maybe I should round that to 0 0.34. So it would be 0 0.34%. So that means that every year, all right, it drops 0.34%. All right, so it, does, it drops less than a half of a percent every year, but it's, but it's dropping. All right, it drops about a third of a percent every year. So it's a pretty straightforward problem. The numbers are a little ugly, but it's just a matter of figuring out, all right, what's my y, what's my x, and then remembering that y always goes on top, x goes on the bottom. That's the way we figure out rates of change. All right, for this last problem, all right, I'm going to make some room here so I can work. Describe the transformation. Oh, you know what? We are going to skip this one. So. That concludes this broadcast. We're not going to do transformations because we didn't cover that in class. Um, and uh, we will pick up the next video at number 11.